God's teeth. You never were very much of a cusser. How long, Doc? I've... I've always pictured my life as a piece of string winding into the future. Always figured I had another 20, 30 years. 30, 60, maybe 90 days. Too bad. I had to ask. You know how it is with us engineers. Problem situation. One approach fails. You search for alternative solutions. Adam. No switching to plan B. <laughs> I checked every possibility. The clinic double checked. Then I double checked the clinic. Then. Then you did exactly what I would have done. Called in the troubleshooters. That's right. Hoping somewhere, somehow, somebody to tell you you don't know your job. I accept most of your preamble about the rich, full life with which I've been blessed. The plain, unvarnished truth is, I need time. I know. Certain, um, certain aspects of my life are not in order. You, uh, <laughs> you jumped the gun and gave me both barrels, you. Right between the eyes. Yeah. I figured you could take it. I thank you for that respect. You've given me time, John. Not much. Take care of those other matters, Mr. Thornton. Production wants you to comment on the new estimates. Tomorrow. Were you able to reach my lawyer? Mr. Block says whenever. No. A couple of months, eh? Maybe more. Wouldn't know what to look at me, would you? This is crazy. You've razzed me so long about outliving me that I'd begun to believe it myself. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you, old friend, but that's the way it is. Now, I've got a few very delicate matters to iron out, and I need your help. Anything. Why don't you go out the house and talk to Kate? I've waited four years to hear you say that. The split up, the separation. Hold it, hold it. I'm not looking for a last minute reconciliation. I walked out on that lady for a bunch of reasons that Lady, really don't matter much now. People can love each other and still call it off, separate. After a lifetime of marriage and... Uh, I need specific private information. Kate has it, that's all. What sort of information? Addresses. Our four children are grown and gone, and except for Julie, I'm, you know, the situation, I'm out of touch. I phone Julie and the grandchildren once or twice a week. As for the others, 
You talk to Tom in New York? We talk to Tom, you and I together, about Thornton Industries, business board meeting stuff. Otherwise, he's as uptight and stubborn as I am. Or was, until a couple of hours ago. So you want to mend things, eh? If possible. My older daughter, Peggy, is somewhere down in Washington, jumping from bureau to bureau. You know about that split. I knew that she'd cut you out after the separation. Mm-hmm. Took Kate's side. Anyway, I want to go down there, spend some time, try to... Uh... Well, you want her location. Okay. That's three. Now we come to Adam Thornton, Jr. But I've got to see Bud. Wherever he is, I suppose he's still somewhere in Canada. I want to see him. The only way to contact him and set up a meeting is through his mother. I can get her to open up about Bud. But I'll have to take Doc with me. Forget it. I remember old man Chambers driving his horse and sleigh down that street. First fur hat I'd ever seen outside of picture books. That whole New England winter feeling has gone to plastic pine trees, electronic music, smog, and black slush. Maybe Christmas is gone, too. Phony commercial. I gotta make a call. I appreciate you making those revisions in my will yourself. Hello. Kate. This is Adam. Hello, Adam. How are you? Just fine. And you? Fine, thank you. Good. Good. Uh... Kate, something's uh, come up, and I'd uh, hate to cut around old Bob, but I, I'd like to come out to the house and talk to you if it's convenient. Well, when would you like to talk? As soon as... Uh... Well, I'm free now. Fine, that's fine. Uh, I'll be there in 20 minutes. See you then. Right. Goodbye. Oh, Mary, no, not now, later. Something wrong, Mrs. Thornton? No, yes. Mr. Thornton's coming over in a few minutes. To stay? Oh, no. Could you come back tomorrow, Mary, please? Okay. Cold. Oh, there's some coffee in the kitchen. Would you rather have it in the living room? Kitchen's fine. You're looking very well. Kate, you haven't changed a bit. When you reach a certain age, there's not much left to change with. Um, 
What is this about? Uh, the children. I'd, I'd like to find out... Uh, how they how are? I... Well, they seem to be doing very well. Uh. Tom's still climbing the legal ladder. Mm. Forty lawyers in one firm is... Yeah, yeah, I know. I know, I know. And stepping a lot of thumbs. Peggy's had another promotion. Oh? Julie says George's business is still in a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. Poor man, he's had a run of bad luck. Yeah. But they're still hoping. That outfit's a sinking ship. He ought to bail out. Well, at least he's loyal. Oh, Tom and Helen invited me down to the city for Christmas again. Oh, good. But, oh, I don't know. All that frantic talk about clients and connections. Yeah. <laughs> Dropping names I never even heard of. So I thought I'd let it pass. What's wrong? Wrong? This sudden interest in your family after all these years. Mine could change. Well... You can go through the motions. Okay. Here's the situation. You you know the seasonal slack. I have a notion to make a little tour, see them all, talk a few things out. Play the grandpa routine with Julie's kids. Are you sure you can afford the time? Kate, I really... No, you have always done exactly as you pleased. You don't need my approval. No. I need Peggy's address. And some way of contacting Bud. All right. My address book is upstairs. John, what's wrong? Kate, if you think something's wrong, ask him, not me. What's going on? He's talking about taking a trip, seeing the kids. A trip? Yes. All over the country, up to Canada, too. I want to know. Would you have him call me, please? John. No, I can't discuss it. I have a right to know. Funny. I expected everything to be moved around. <laughs> Did you get the addresses? You liar! You cruel, selfish, vicious... Kate, Kate! I came here to ask you a small favor. Whatever happened between us in the past, how I behaved... A you. man can change. You haven't changed. And you can't change now. I can't change. The trip will change. There isn't going to be any trip. What do you mean? You expect me to sit here like Miss Divinity... Two shoes, when you go traipsing around the country doing a last minute loving daddy routine. This is gonna be any trip. Were you gonna tell them the truth and not me? What truth? Oh, I can see you now racing around Canada till you drop dead in a Manitoba washroom. Upstairs, you, uh, you called John. Of course I called John. What did he tell you? I told him I, I was afraid you were you were having a sudden attack of senility. Senility, huh? What did he say? Nothing. But correct me if I'm wrong, please. It's worse than that. How much worse? I've run out of time. Believe me, kid, I had every intention of telling you the truth. But not right now. Not right away. Not until I had a chance to see the children. Try to undo. Try to make contact. You understand what I'm trying to say? What I have in mind? Yes. I gather the good doctor feels I won't last the trip. Well, there is an alternative. What's that? You can have them come here. 
How do I work that? With my help. We'll have a, a Christmas reunion, a gathering of the Thorntons. No, that's the last... Now, will you hear me out? This place is big enough for everybody. Okay. Don't interrupt me. I know exactly what you're going to say next. It's no good. It won't work if they come out of pity or concern. You'll never be able to resolve your differences with Peggy or Bud. Daddy's dying. Kiss the old SOB and kid him along. Can you imagine Tom at this reunion of yours? Tom has his good points. Ah, oh, it's mother love talking. He's as hard and as stubborn as... a carbon copy. Well, win, lose, or draw, we've had our showdown coming for years. As for Bud, I haven't seen him since we had that stupid blowout right here in this room. Took me two years to realize that I was wrong. Okay, now I know. And if my trip is out, writing a letter of apology or saying a few words into a telephone, well, aren't enough. And if he finds out that I'm, if any of them find out. Let's take it one step at a time. The least touch of pity and this whole thing turns out as phony as, as that music out there. Well. Wait a minute. Are you making this gesture for me? For them. For my children. My family. Of which you just happen to be the father. All right? We can try. You don't think these things are important? Everything's important where your career is concerned. Helen. It's a game. Anything else? Try to act as if you're playing for the fun of it, but underneath it all, in the last analysis, the object is to win. When you're out to win, even the Christmas tree becomes a weapon. The truth is, you still want a green tree. Isn't that what you grew up with? Your mother's tree was always green. We settled all that. She called again this afternoon. She didn't actually beg. That's not Kate's style. We sent 40 invitations, all important. Switch the open house to New Year's Day. You're disregarding all the invitations we've accepted. Besides, it sounds last minute. <laughs> it sounds real. A traditional Christmas family gathering at the house in which you were born. Kate's being here last year. The fact that Adam Thornton is your father. Tommy, you talk about games and winning. Those elements and these pictures around here do more for your career than 40 white Christmas trees. And you know it. And you know how he and I feel about each other. Helen, it'd be a charade. All tight smiles and tension, both of us trying to keep from hauling off and... Phony is a $3 bill. Remember the last time? Five, six years ago. She says your father wants to see you. 
She says. You? Peggy? Julie? George? Their children? Everybody's coming, Tom. Maybe she can't promise, but she's hoping somehow Bud might get there. Helen. Tom, give it a chance, please. If you won't do it for her, will you do it for me? Please. You sent the gifts. Right? Well, as far as I'm concerned, that's settled. Incidentally, as far as back as I can remember, he was the one that always insisted that green was the only color for a Christmas tree. Absolute, inviolable, adamant green. Well, I happen to favor white. That's how it's going to be. And this is where it's going to be. Take that drink. You all done? Undone, Roger. Done in. Well, you've been going at it pretty hard. This environmental protection agency is like fighting in a sea of marshmallows. <laughs> mm. That's terrific. You know, I've always said the best bartenders in the world work out of the State Department. That's not all we're good at. Yeah, I know. Roger, this uh, Christmas thing has taken on a new complication. Uh-uh. No more complications. The Washington party list is scrubbed. We're going to Aspen. Yeah, well, my mother called. What about? She wants me to come home for Christmas. What? Well, what did you say? It's a great idea. There's nothing in the world I'd like better than to be with the whole family, but... But Aspen's confirmed that you need a real holiday. It's not that simple. Something seems to be starting up again between her and my father. Well, you said they got divorced years ago. No, separated. They had an argument, and he uh, stormed out. It's not even legal. It's just two people living apart, one very angry. And one very hurt. Something's starting up. You mean they're getting back together? Mm-mm. She didn't say that. I mean, not flat out, but... I could hear her starting to hope again. But, uh... What does she stand to gain by your physical presence? Oh, it's not just me she wants here. It's the whole tribe. The whole family with the... Can't all appear. We didn't discuss Bud. Is that what you mean? Then it's not the whole family. My interests are purely selfish. I want you happy. You want me to ask him. with you? Well, it's the same thing. You know. <laughs> oh, I know. I want to go too. Christmas in Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> you are not making this easy, Roger. It's a terrific deal. <laughs> Take it. You could have heard her on the telephone. She sounded so fragile. I don't know, this ritual of family gathering, it seems very unreal. Why? Because of him. Well, your father? Yes. Dear old dad. What's this? He walked out on her. Well, that's their business. 
Her life just stopped. She's been up there all alone in that house all these years, just waiting for him to come back. I don't know. Sounds to me like she handled the whole thing very well. She obviously never stopped loving the man. She'd been patient. She waited. And now, from what you tell me, there's an element of hope. No, if there was any real chance of them getting back together again, she would have told me so. Knowing how you feel, what you'd probably say? You're right. So, the way you left her with your mother? Just no actual commitment. It's in the air. Which leaves our plans in the air, too. We still have a few days. Do you mind? As the guy who'd like to spend Christmas in the Rockies with you, yes, I mind. Well, you can push me for an answer. You'll get one. It won't be the one you want. Well, we've got a few days left. We'll let you search your heart. Take your time. <laughs> Careful, it's hot. What do I need? Oh, yeah. A good night's sleep is what you need. Mm. How are the kids? Fine. Oh, why don't you let up on yourself, George? This is silly. Well, this whole company is coming apart at the seams, and nobody is really trying to find out why. Well? I thought you said it's because they, uh, over-diversified, is that the word? Yeah, well, they bought into a lot of small companies without really checking out what was going on. This is uh, BTL Turning Works. They've just come up with a new high-speed computerized metal turning lathe, which is great if you got the software to go with it. Now they haven't found a supplier, and the whole thing is going down the drain. Funny, your father's company, Thornton Industries, they bought into a similar deal, but uh, I guess they can afford the loss. We have to resolve this business about Mom and Dad. You take the kids and go without me. That's no Christmas. Well, then stay here. Look, I am, I'm just not ready for your father's rough and ready shots right now. Not until I get back on my feet financially. Besides, he's still mad at me for not going to work for him. Oh, yeah. He understood about your wanting to make it on your own. Well, what was I supposed to do? If I was going to work for him, and if I succeeded, then it would have been because I married the boss's daughter. And if I failed, he would have been down my throat. So I'm failing anyhow. When Daddy teases you like that, he expects you to sass him back. Well, how am I supposed to sass him back when we both know I've been living off his daughter for the past six months? You don't live off his daughter. For five years, you paid for everything. Daddy was poor when he married Mama. She worked to help him get through MIT. Yeah, I know the story. They're expecting the four of us. It's family. Can you understand that? Can you understand I can't handle it? If it weren't for you, he wouldn't have any grandchildren. They're putting up a tree for the first time since he moved out. I can't begin to tell you what Christmas was like in that house when I was growing up. Next year. Mama asked me if Tiffany was ready for my old dollhouse. I told her yes. 
Well, I can just see it. How's it going, George? Then the laugh. <laughs> then the crack about my degree at Columbia University and be... Hey. You know, Julie. Hey, Julie. Jim, you, I'll see you on that Thursday. Now, don't forget. Thursday. Clara, what do you got? Right here. Christmas bonuses. Uh, Stagger production schedule. What else? The office party. Bats. See that everyone has a good time and the cleanup crew stays sober. Sure you don't want to make an appearance? So I can watch people celebrate with paper cups? Do I always sound like this? Like what? Throw in bah humbug and I could pass for Ebenezer Scrooge. Oh, Mr. Thornton, that's how you are. God's teeth. That's what I mean. You're the last of the rugged individualists. If anything comes up, I'll be in my apartment or the house. The house? Very nice to hear you say that again. Thank you, Claire, but don't jump to any conclusions. The relationship is friendly, period. I still live... Straight back to the, you see the stand there. Come on, take off some of those clothes. Go ahead, straight up. Oh. Wipe your feet. How do you like that, Kate? Oh, it's a beauty. Huh? Oh. That's a good look at the blue spruce as you'll ever see. All right, Jeff, get down there and hammer it in. Okay, Mr. Stone. All right, Bob, Clara, Mary, Mary. Our Mary? Mm-hmm. She's still around? Oh, only two days a week. That's all I need her for now. Plastic punch cups. Or oh, the Christmas carolers. You know the way they always do. Oh, yeah, it. I remember. We lost a fortune on cut crystal. A small fortune, <laughs> but a fortune. <laughs> uh, how about the kids? Well, I called everybody except Bud. That's complicated. Yeah? We'll see. Uh, what's what's that name? We'll see. They're all rather startled. Well, sure. A last-minute invitation out of left field, but they're coming, aren't they? Well, if and if. You know, it means the cancellations and rescheduling, all kinds of juggling around. I made it clear this was a joint invitation, and actually that started a lot of questions. Mm. I couldn't very well say, look, you get here. So, they'll see what they can work out and call back. What about Bud? Does he have a phone? No. He has a new name, though. Steve Smith. Original. I sent him a wire to Canada. All we can do is hope they'll make it and proceed as though it's going to happen. Incidentally, I like the way you put the tree up. They could still handle a hammer. Old Thornton tradition. Steve? Steve? There's a telegram for you. Well, open it up. What's it say? It's from your hometown. Dearest Bud, season's greetings from both of us. Entire family gathering for Christmas reunion at the old place. 
Realize your work comes first, but would dearly love to have you with us. All love, Mother and Dad. Mom and Dad? Oh, look, pretty yellow paper. Can you see? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's from your grandma and your grandpa. Didn't know you had a couple of those things, did you? They didn't know they have a grandson, either. Or a daughter-in-law. That's right. Well, sounds nice. Mom throws a hell of a Christmas. We'll see. We gotta get this roof finished before we lose the light. Freshen your drink. Please. Canopy? Take up a view, Tom. I understand your view is fabulous. <laughs> the East River, boats, bridges. Well, you'll see it Christmas Eve. We expect you around 9. Right, Tom? We'll be there. Gone ahead, join me if and when. Love, Roger.
To hell with the draft! Don't give me that radical Look, junk. this isn't like your war with Hitlers and Tojos. You are in serious trouble. This nation is in serious trouble. Protest is one matter. Dodging the draft is something else. What do you want? Petitions? They don't work. Action does. You're gonna jump the country? Start by jumping the hell out of this house! And I was wrong. Tomorrow night's Christmas Eve. I just realized I'll never see Bud again. Maybe none of them. That was Julie. She and George are coming, and Tiffany, and little Joey. Grandpa. Kate. It's happening. It's really happening. You're not going to kiss your daughter? No. <laughs> Thanks for coming. I am so glad to be here. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Put it over the fire, and it pops. <laughs> but we use a pan for popcorn. You do? Do you leave food for Santa Claus? I do. Do you? What do you leave? Cookies and some milk. Yeah? What if he gets so fat he can't go back up the chimney? Adam. Mm. Honey and I agree it's nice for all of us to be in this house again. Yes, it is. Oh, I think uh, the punch bowl needs some freshening up. Excuse me. I'll help you. What is this weird-looking bundle you brought me? Oh, yeah, I thought you'd enjoy it. You uh, never open up your gifts before Christmas morning, do you? Looks too big for a box of exploring cigars. Open it. 
I knew you wouldn't. It's driving you off the wall, isn't it? As a matter of fact, yes, yes. <laughs> you know, you're really not a very nice character. You know that? Judging from the size of this, I'd say it's a bill for your service. <laughs> Whatever. I'll lay you even money. It's got a lifetime guarantee. Now, I'd say that's a very shrewd bet. Uh-oh. Looks like somebody's trying to burn down the house. Everything under control? Oh, sorry. Oh, no harm done. Anything wrong? Wrong? You've been avoiding me all evening. Well, uh, the way things are going, and after our last conversation, You think I don't know what it's like? Joey. Yes? Your daddy is a very good man. I told my daddy Santa's going to burn. Your daddy and I will explain all about that before you go to bed. Right? Right. There's your son. Joyeux Noël, everybody. Mother. Oh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, well. Joyeux Noël, huh? Merry Xmas, Tom. I hope you didn't have to park the car too far. I heard you changed. You're worse. <laughs> well, I have changed in certain respects, and I very much hope that we can resolve our differences while you're here. But I can't until you cut the baloney. Baloney, huh? Uh-huh. Merry Xmas, Tom. We'll get to this later. Alone. Meanwhile, do me one small favor, will you? Name it. Your undergraduate schools were Lennox and Dartmouth. Harvard Law doesn't count. So back off on the JFK imitation. Will do. Good. When you stop playing Spencer Tracy. <laughs> hey, everybody, the carol. I missed it. Somebody get the plastic cups. Hurry up, they're out here.
stars are out. It's a good clear night for you. No, who? Who? Who wants to hear an exciting story? Yeah. All right, get over here. Listen very, very carefully. It was the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas would soon be there. And now comes the exciting part, which your daddy is going to read. Get over here. Come on. And Grandpa's going to listen. <laughs> do as well as I do. <laughs> the children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I tore like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave a luster of midday to all objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh on eight tiny reindeer. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back with a little old driver's stars and I can't name one always went to study up on astronomy doesn't matter no time to think about that now now is all I've got now and this gift this miracle of seeing them all again with a sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too all but you, bud. All is bright round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. something. What? Your famous Christmas recitation, sir. Oh, let's hear the old stand. The unprintable masterpiece of England's greatest poet. Who's that? Rudyard Kipling, sir, who, like Robert Burns, employed certain words which forced his finest stuff to remain forever unknown to the masses. Proceed. Well, where are the ladies? They're upstairs. Father's never been known to use foul language in the presence of ladies. I'll bleep for you. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> Christmas in the Workhouse by Mr. Rudyard Kipling. Here, here, here. Cheers. Here, here, here. Here, here, here. Oh, it was Christmas in the Workers, the best day of the year. And the paupers all was happy, for their guts was full of beer. The master of the Workers strode through them dismal alls. And he wished them all Merry Christmas. And the paupers answered. <laughs> <laughs> now the master, he grew angry. He swore by all the gods. They'd have no Christmas pudding, the lousy lot of sods. Ah. 
common usage. Webster's Collegiate. <laughs> Up sprang a war scarred veteran who'd stormed the Khyber Pass. We don't want your Christmas pudding and. <laughs> ah! Ah, <laughs> shape up in here. Uh oh. Oh, you were listening. Oh, we heard was something that sounded like a gong. Too bad. You missed Father Spencer Tracy imitation. Come on, it's getting late, so I'm uh, throwing right. you guys. We're going, we're going, but we'll be back. Good night. Good night. Now listen, come on, we all have a date up in the attic. Oh. Oh. Kill the attic! <laughs> I rewired this last night. No way she can get a shock. Instead of plugging it into the wall, da da. Adam, that's simply brilliant. Right? Well, no, that's 25 years late. I remember Peg blowing all the fuses with that thing. Hey, who repainted my train set? What do you think? Don't forget the tunnels and the lake. Me a phony. It's way after midnight. I can open any damn thing I please. What's this I hear? It sounds like self justification. Yep. There's a reason why I want to see what's in this package. And now you're explaining. If you don't back up, I'll tell you the reason. I... No. I won't tell you. You're not ready for it. I always get that speech about what a phony I am. And then when I've tried to explain to you that things aren't the same in my world as they are in yours, you, uh, you always tell me to shut up. You give me this rule for living. Never complain, never explain. And you tell me to learn it and stick to it. Good. Just about impossible, but good. Only you just blew it. Look, it's getting late, and I'm getting tired, and we're getting nowhere. Oh, I, I think we're making a little progress. You told me how alike we are, and how you see me heading into the same mistakes you've made because I'm like you. And then you turn around and told me to be like you. Wonderful. Which way do you want it? Start by treating your wife better. Because if I don't, I'm going to end up by walking out on her the way you walked out on your wife. That's right. I don't appreciate Helen. But you appreciated Mom? Too late, I did. You appreciate her now? That's right. You know she loves you. Say the word, she'll take you back. I'm stubborn. <clears throat> Listen carefully. A man gets his lumps out there in the world. Comes home and cries like a kid. The woman comforts him. Tells him he's right. Because she knows he needs approval from somewhere out there. And you getting this? 
Go on. He gets used to that approval. Now, one day, he notices that she's not in total agreement with his thinking. Well, maybe she's right, too. But all he knows is that that approval stuff isn't there anymore. So he punishes her. He runs away like a little kid punishing his mother. That's how it went. You and her. I figured, like a little kid, she'd run after me. I had the sulks. I called it pride. <laughs> I was proud. Mom's a little proud herself. <laughs> yeah, 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 she is, she is. All I had to do was turn around, make a move. Your mother had done that a hundred times. This time, she sat in this house waiting for me to grow up. You grown up now? A little late. You proud now? And you're going to straighten me out? You've got 20 years left in you, and all you can do is cry about it. It's too late. How are you going to spend the rest of your life? I'd really like to know. Drink up. While I open the Christmas present for my doctor. John. John Hodges. Old John was born in Gainesville, Florida. You know how they used to celebrate Christmas down there? You never called him the doctor before. That's Palmetto and Scrub Pine Country. They didn't feel much about Christmas trees or snow. Too late. Huh? I, I said, uh, it's too late. No, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. Come on, son. Let's shoot them off right now. Come on, come on. Anybody wakes up, they're welcome to the show. It's Christmas. Come on. Ha, 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 ha! 
head up for bushes or the water. A horsey. Yeah. An eagle's on a farm. Joey, look, a dolly. See, you put the bottle in his mouth so we can drink. Hey, Joey, want to go wake up Grandpa? Let's go. Christmas presents? No. Well, let's go look at them. Come on! Yay! Yay! Come on! Yeah. Oh. oh, whoa, horsey. Whoa, now we got a little surprise for you here. Here we go, Joey. You have to put on your cap first. There you go. And I'll put on mine. And let's see what this surprise is. Let's see. Look very carefully. Look, 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 look. Wow. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you're the engineer. You run it. Come on, Tiffany. Let's see what this box has to do. Wow. Open it. Wow. Wow. Open the box. Wow. All right, girl. Wow. Now get over here and get the bottom one. Right away. Now get up real close and look at it. But watch what happens now. Karoom! Lights! Look at the morphine! Oh, that's a beauty. Yeah. What are you gonna call it? Yeah. How do you like this? Tiffany, look at this. There you go, Mr. Engineer. Uh, take over. Yeah. Craziest Christmas I ever saw. Christmas? Oh. <laughs> I thought you were celebrating the 4th of July. <laughs> Who wants a present? Me! All right, get over here. Come on. There's one for Tiffany. And something for Joe, Big Joe. Roger's terrific, but he ain't easy. I can't push him around, Mom. There's a flight to Aspen tonight, and I'm on it or I'm out. Take it. If you can't push him around, then he must be a pretty good man. <laughs> Well, that's settled. Now, uh, what's the story on you and Dad? We seem to be friends again. Oh, come on, Mama. I told you. I, he seems different, and I really love him. Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas, darling. You're awfully cheery after a 3 a.m. late show. Well, you know how it is when the old man and me get together, Peg. Fireworks. Where, where did the Roman candles come from? John Hodges. You gotta hurry downstairs and check Tiffany out on that dollhouse. I'm going. Hurry, yeah. hurry! Before the poor little kid electrocutes herself the way you did. Well, at least it curled my hair. <laughs> well, did you two manage to talk things out? We came pretty close. Ninety percent. I'd say that was very close. I, uh, I want to get your opinion on this Christmas present I got him, Mom. It's a new fishing rod. Oh, how nice! That means June. Six months away. Now, uh, this is something I picked up for George. It's three bottles of liquor. See, the problem is that Dad already has a lot of fishing tackle. George has none. Merry Christmas, Dad. Merry Christmas, darling. Would you like some coffee? I'd love some. I've got a notion to switch these Christmas presents, Mom. I think that's a very thoughtful idea. But you spent a fortune at Abercrombie's. Hello. Do me a favor. Switch the tags on these presents and put them back under the tree, huh? All right. I still don't know what made me change my mind. Did he say it? No, not a word. But all of a sudden, I knew. Has anyone told Bud?
I'd know that Dad was dying, he'd come. No matter what. But he doesn't. And he won't until. Suppose I... Uh, I cancel everything, go up there and find him and bring him home. I don't think this time. about it. I can't find a software company small enough to buy. Well, there are about 10 technical universities with computers large enough to handle your needs. So? Well, there's no way they can fill all their computer time. Why don't you approach one and offer to set up an intern program in exchange for the software that they can provide for you? It's a great idea. Why didn't I think of that? I should have. Didn't. But no matter, because I'll put it into action tomorrow. Why don't you come in and handle it? Are you offering me a job? Again, because of your fresh ideas. I've got to retire, doctor's orders. Maybe uh, that fact should sweeten the prospect for you, huh? Hmm? Not necessarily. Look, George, this is no handout. You'll pay your way and more. I'll slot you where you'll stand a chance of becoming your own man. Fair enough? Well, I, I, I can't just walk out. Well, how long do you need? 72 hours. Done. Now, <clears throat> I'll tell you what. Let's get back to the house because I'm freezing my backside off. You're a hard sell, George. Anyone ever tell you that before? Ah! This is a sparkle city here. <laughs> very nice. Yes, I've been a very good girl. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's this? What's this? Huh? What's this? What's this? A little, uh, something. A little old dad. A little old dad. Ma, Daddy offered George a job. That would, oh. that would be so wonderful to have. Oh. <laughs> That's very generous of you, hotshot. So, uh, what do you give to a man who has everything? That's a fitted case, George. Julie, you sure know how to choose a man the finest. <laughs> uh, it's not from Julie. Uh, Tom, I, I don't know the uh, one end of this from the other, but thank you. I'll teach you, George. It's always a good idea to start off with the right gear. Right. Absolutely. We haven't played poker in a long time, have we? Any time, Dad. You used to wipe me out regularly, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. But I suddenly have the feeling that your game is improving. I do. Thank you. That's the nicest present anybody could ever get. Shh! That's not a present. You want to blow it? Here. Oh! That's for you. It's probably wrong, but, but I remember you did say one time. But come on, open it. Come on. I, all right, you open yours, I'll open mine. Stuff I ran across in the attic and I recycled it. Oh, look! What's that? Oh, oh my God. God. Come over here, Oh, 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 o
that's beautiful. Oh, that goes that's with a good old years. Years. Oh. Yes. That's not bad either. Yeah. Where? Oh. oh, look at legs. Look at legs. <laughs> oh. No one can make it make it look better. Faster than that. Right. And don't cook it. How you doing? George. Now I understand we're going to see a great deal of each other from now on. I want you to know how pleased I am about it. Well, thank you, Bob. Hey, gentlemen, I I think this occasion calls for some sort of a toast, all right? And uh, I don't know how to express what I'm feeling. Uh, to, um, I don't know. Dad. Well, we're all here except for one. I, uh... I've had a great many blessings in this life. And among them is one I didn't recognize until... I want to drink to what we have. To what we had. And to what we hope to have. You know... Who the hell's that? It's Bud! Heavenly Father, bless this food and all those gathered here. Wait. Thank you, Lord, for bringing all of these wonderful people together here all at once. And please help us to remember that no matter where we are and no matter how, how separated we become, we must always remain together family. Amen. Amen. Who, who wants white meat and uh, who wants dark meat? Oh, I think a little of both is in order. Uh, I'll take both. White. <laughs> <laughs> One white, two whites, three whites. Grandma Kate, and Aunt Peggy, and Aunt Julie, and Aunt Helen. Yeah. You never knew you had such a big family. Oh, he's a Thornton all right. Look at those cheeks. She's Adam from head to toe. Senior or junior? Both. What are you weighing? <laughs> oh, nine pounds more or less. The weight of a fisherman's scale. You delivered him alone? Well, no, Bud was there to help, but we just read the book. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sound as a dollar. What do you feed him? What do you think? Way to go. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> you have a pet moose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> George is coming into the company. 
great. He'll be good for you. Dad won't say it. He'd like you in too, bud. Then let me say it. I would. Thanks, Dad. You'll come? And be a uh, businessman. <laughs> Live in cities and work in an office with all respect. No thanks. How do you hack in anyway? Mom says you're a carpenter. I'm an independent artisan. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's a rare commodity these days. And Dad started teaching me when I was nine or ten the right way to swing a hammer, to hang a sash, finish off a job. So you're a carpenter. Let me see your hands. Son of a gun. <laughs> Coming from him, that's high praise. What are your immediate plans? Can we hold off on that until Mom and Tony are here? I'm glad you came back. I was just waiting for an invitation. Dad, I'm tired of living under false identities. I want my name, your name. I want it back. I want my wife and my son to bear that name. I'm not Steve Smith. I'm Adam Thornton, Jr. Any problems with that? No. He is Adam Thornton, Jr. I really missed you. You, uh, know the young father. Oh, the first uh, time we met, he disgraced Adam and me in oh. front of a packed house. <laughs> the entire congregation. Goodness, you never told me that. What? I was his age for Christmas sakes. <laughs> <laughs> it was his first protest demonstration. Oh. <laughs> I'm really sorry I can't perform this in church. No, no, this is more fitting. He's, uh, number three. Uh, oh, come on, Can we give you a hand with that? Let me see, they come separate there. <laughs> Mom, why don't, why don't... No, 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 let Adam. There's my boy. That's my boy. And out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that was pleasant to sight and good for food. The tree of life, and amidst the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We are gathered here to name this child. Adam Thornton III. I baptize thee in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Congratulations, Two years in our house. Oh, all right. Oh, no, wait up, everybody. And a lot more. I don't think the old fella here can take it. Oh, 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 it's cold. You understand, don't you, Pop? Oh, sure, I understand. Sure. You gonna wear this while you're skiing? <laughs> I don't dare. I haven't finished paying for it yet. Well, you just be careful on those slopes, you hear? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, I'm glad we did this. Let's uh, do it again next year. Why not? Well, okay, I'm off. Here I go, Aspen. <laughs> Bye, Mom. Merry Christmas. Bye, Merry Christmas. Bye, Bye darling. <laughs> oh. Well, you better get some sleep, too. I've got a busy day tomorrow. <laughs> Leaving for Canada? Bob, I've got three houses I'm working on there. Well, can't you leave them? Would you ever walk out on a job? Uh, <laughs> no, no. But you're coming back. Well, this is my home. We, we always come home again. What about you, Tony? You're part of the family, too. Well, we'll be going back to Canada. But when Bud's finished with his work, uh... <laughs> When you come home, the family will be here. Good night, then.
Good night, bud. Good night, Kate. Good night. My loves. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Kate. What is it? I. You know me. I've never had much grace at expressing. Thanks. I think I'll stay up a while. Good night. 